I did a forum at Banff once, and there was a bunch of us on the on the panel. There was myself and Jason Priestley and Eric McCormick and a, a few producers and writers, and we were talking about the differences between working in Canada and the United States. And Eric is Eric McCormick is is from British Columbia, I think. Anyways. At one point he said, you know, maybe I just had a bit more ambition and I moved down to the United States and I stayed there because I wanted to make it there. And I said, well, Eric, with all due respect, I think it takes a little bit more ambition to make it in, in Canada because, you know, the, 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 I used to always say it's, it's about, it's twice the work, but it's half the money and it's half the track record. So in other words, you know, when I did Seinfeld, millions of people would watch and Canadians would say, oh, well, he passed the litmus test in the United States. He's, I guess he's valid up here, which has always been the Canadian way. You know, if, it, if you made it, well, before the Americans, it was the Brits. And if you made it in Britain, then you were valid in Canada. And now if you, if you make it in the United States, you're going to make it here, that, that, that it was very much a test. I've always thought that in order to make it in the film industry, you have to do whatever it takes to leave. I've been writing, shooting, and directing my own stuff for years in my city, and I feel like people only started to really care about my work when I started to do gigs outside of town. It's crazy how people think you've made it when you leave, but really nothing changed but the atmosphere around you. My passion is with me regardless of where I am, and somehow I got brainwashed into believing what everyone said. I used to encourage people to leave no matter what. I never had any desire to build here. I wanted to matter, and in Toronto, people don't view us the same as they do in America. I've had countless conversations with creatives, and it always ends with us plotting to leave the city. Until now. Lucky for me, I had the opportunity to sit down with Peter Callahan, who really put things into perspective for me. I'm Peter Callahan. I'm an actor, and I guess oft called a social activist. I get involved with a lot of causes outside of acting. I just feel I need to give back in life. My motto has always been, leave the world a little better than you found it. So, um, you know, it can be done in infinitesimal ways or the most grandiose ways, I suppose, if you're Bill Gates. So I started getting into comedy and I did the comedy mill with Steve Smith and then I did Second City and then I got into other, um, you know, television work in Canada. Ended up going to the United States for five years. Lived in Los Angeles from 90 to 95. Had two children there. Both my children were born in Los Angeles. Um, and just was faced with riots and floods and earthquakes and just an atmosphere for children that I did not want to deal with. You know, metal detectors at elementary schools, which I thought, mm, no, not so much. So moved back to Canada, started thriving in this industry, just doing what I can to work in this country create my own stuff. My definition of success uh, comes in many forms. Success in life, I suppose. I'm most proud of uh, my kids, how well they're doing. Success in the business, I suppose, is working. It's not always about the work. It's about the not working, too, and, and sticking with it, because it can be really tough. They say that an actor that is doing really well will uh, make one in 12 auditions. So that's tough. So at any one time, there's 90 or 95% of all actors everywhere in the world that are, are not working. So it's a very privileged place to be. So I feel very proud of that. I also feel very proud of working in this country. There's a bit of an attitude in this country, I guess, that we don't necessarily celebrate success a lot, which is tough, you know, especially in the, in the cultural community. I think that, um, you know, in other fields like business and hockey and you know, sports, it's it's a it's a much different thing. But in in uh, in our cultural industries, it's it's a little different, and that's that's hard to do. It's hard to deal with. I want to work in a place that I want to live in, so it's it's great to be able to uh, to be here to to live and work. Welcome to my new office space. What do you think? There's a brewing. Um, appetite, I think, for all things Canadian, because I, I think people are starting to really understand that we need to nurture who and what we are, because uh, I do think it's the best country in the world to live in, by far, by far, and uh, and I want to be here and, and share in that, and I think we're we're taking baby steps towards a really fertile cultural um, ground, and. Um, 
we've got a long way to go, but I think we're on the right path because I think young people today are really starting to understand the value in cultural industry. And now, I don't want to run from the challenge of creating in my city. I want to be one of the ones to build here because we have the talent, we have the drive, we have everything that we need to flourish just like anybody else.